Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Santa Seed Company and we are here at our Ramona farm and it is June and I want to give you a little farm tour. I want to show you what our farm looks like, what we're growing, what we're doing, some things that I'm excited about and also some things that you can look forward to later on in the season as our crops progress and eventually make it into a seed pack that you can pick up online or at one of our stores. Now before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video and so that I can help you grow the best garden possible in zone nine and 10. Okay, so why are we doing a farm tour? Why is it useful to you? So we do these tours for a couple different reasons. One is if you're in zone nine or 10, you can look and see what my garden or my farm looks like and get an idea of what you should be growing more or less what the stages of your plant should look like give you some ideas some inspiration and also it's really fun to see what a garden or a farm can look like in zone 9 and 10 there's so many different ways to grow you can grow in containers you can grow in ground like we do here there's so many different methods and I'm not claiming that one is necessarily better than the other but there's definitely some consideration so as we go through the farm tour you can look around and see and hopefully this will help you guys think of some questions you can put them in the comments and then we can help you answer those questions and hopefully have a successful season Great. there's a bug on your lens it's I know. driving me nuts can you Stop. see it in the video yeah. okay once it goes right through the metal okay okay so we are in one of our fields that has tons of tomatoes we've got tomatoes we've got squash we have our beautiful delicate dahlias over here we have scabiosas for the pollinators actually i can see from here with my laser vision a massive native bee on one of those blooms what we're working on this morning is trying to rope up our tomatoes it's always one of the biggest and most labor intensive tasks of the year is trying to contain our tomatoes that are not dwarfs so you can see here we've got several different rows of tomatoes and they're already out of control they're falling into the walkways um, and the reason why that is an issue is when they become laden with uh, tomatoes it's easy for them to snap or break we can't get in here and weed um, you know you can see like this guy is like literally out of control and what's crazy is it happens I swear overnight it's like we're on top of it and we're doing a good job and then we come out here the next day and it's like pfft, we didn't even do anything so we're gonna have to come through here and kind of do the best we can to get these guys contained. Now, I know it looks a little crazy, and that's because we have over 700 tomato plants on this farm. So I can't do what you might do in a garden setting where you really take your time and pin these guys up. You know, you can tie them up. You can do all kinds of different uh, trellising methods. What we're using here is the Missouri, oh, I'm sorry the Florida weave. I always say Missouri and I don't know why. I'm not even from Missouri, but it's a weave nonetheless. I'm gonna call it the SoCal weave because <laughs> that's what we're doing. And it's just a quick and easy way to get the tomatoes up off the ground so that we can get them to the point where we're gonna harvest them for seed. And we have to continue to add more and more throughout the season. Um, you know, we continue to add layers. You can see we already have tomatoes on here. These are the Datarinos, which we talked about several months ago in one of our videos. Really excited. These are supposed to be very good um, Italian uh, paste uh, and, and tomatoes that can keep for a long time. So we have these funny looking things here. And these are little um, bags that we put over our dahlias so that it can help keep the insects off and from destroying the blooms. You can actually see here look at that beauty this is the Vic Jesse um, and what's great about this whole row these were overwintered so we didn't actually dig up these dahlia bulbs and store them like you do in other climates we left them in the ground and we had some die back and that was uh, in part because we had some irrigation issues um, but for the most part most of the dahlias made it through and actually have come back very vigorously um, the next season so some of you might be thinking well if I have these in bags how are they how are they getting pollinated well um, we, these these guys will come on and off throughout the season so we may not actually put this on like you can see here I've got this guy uh, the moment that it is starting to open I've got it covered and that's for cut flower quality so that 
these guys will be the nicest looking if I'm going to cut them. They will come off at some point during the season, allowing for pollination. And also if we're not going to cut them, they don't necessarily need to be covered. The reason why we keep them on for seed production is once we feel like they've been pollinated and we're gonna get good seed from them, I'll actually put these on so we don't lose the seed. This is a great way if you are trying to get a seed, a dry seed from um, a flower that you are afraid is gonna basically break and fall into the ground, these little bags will basically catch them. So these are really fun and easy to use. You could see that we could put them Obviously, I don't need them with the scabiosis because we get 18 million seeds, but like, let's say this seed head was really precious and I didn't want to lose it. The seed can just easily get knocked and fall off. If you put the little bag on it, then it has something to capture it. And I guarantee I don't lose any seed. So for you seed geeks out there, really fun little tip. Let's look at the difference between tomatoes that are dwarf sized and tomatoes that are not. You can see these massive plants. They are very young, they're only going to get bigger, and they are squirrely all over the place, very viney. These are um, a determinate type of tomato, but the plant itself is still gonna get really big. Then, these are our dwarfs. You can see the difference is night and day. They're very small, they're very compact. Obviously, these guys are going to get bigger. These are still, you know, immature plants. They're probably going to get about two to three feet tall but they're very compact. They are so much easier to trellis, to tie up. We usually just do one stake. We're gonna do a couple of strings around it, but honestly, that is it. You can see how stocky and condensed the foliage is. There's not this long, crazy arm that comes off, that grows and then falls on the ground. It really stays super compact. And I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. Dwarf refers to the size of the tomato plant not the tomato. We have 15 different varieties of dwarf tomatoes, and they can be small cherries, they can be huge slicers. When we refer to something as a dwarf, we're talking about the growing habit. It's small, it's compact, it is condensed, it is a lot easier to manage. So if you're growing in beds, pots, or any small spaces, or honestly, if you just don't wanna deal with the massive amount of trellising that an indeterminate pole tomato takes, go with a dwarf. These guys look very unimpressive, but there's something super exciting about these and a lot of the flowers on our farm this year. So these are eugeniums, these are blue glitter. They're actually part of the thistle family and they will get these beautiful, incredible, like blue glittery looking um, flowers. And the reason why they're exciting is we're doing so much more flower trialing on our farm because when you look at traditional flower uh, education or growing information, a lot of times it's simply incorrect for zone nine and 10. And I'll give you a prime example. These are listed in most seed catalogs as being a biennial, which means it takes two seasons to actually get your flower head. We planted that this, this year. We are already getting blooms on it. So that's not true. We broke the myth. It is not a biennial in zone nine and 10. Now I haven't cracked the code on exactly why that is. I'm sure it has to do with like, air temperature and day length and all of these different things. But this is why we're doing all of this flower trialing is so that we can put together a, um, a little secret, don't tell anyone, we're gonna do a calendar of just flowers so that you can have really good solid information that's been trialed and tested for zone nine and 10. And so you don't mistakenly think it's gonna take two seasons to get blooms on something that only take one. Now let's go look at another example of us doing some myth busting here on the farm. Rudbeckia is commonly referred to as a biennial as it takes two seasons to get blooms. Um, we planted this this season and we're getting blooms. So I would love to know, um, I by no means am an expert cut flower farmer. I'm a vegetable farmer through and through. So I would love to get some comments on here of why you think this is happening. Um, but obviously you can get the blooms in one season here in zone nine and 10 as proof by this. Um, you know, late spring, these guys were planted. We transplanted them out and we're already getting amazing blooms. We will get tons more throughout the season. The biggest question is how long are these going to last? I think that these, 
I don't know if these will do well in our really, really hot summers, but that's uh, part of what is fun about farming and gardening is you get to find out. All right, so we're doing much more than tomatoes and flowers on the farm. Every year we try to plant as much diversity as we can. If you're looking for exactly what to plant in zone nine and 10 in June, check out our video that is what to plant in June in zone nine and 10 and we list it. We also have a rad calendar that will give you a list of what to plant, but just an idea, we've got tomatoes, We've got eugeniums, which are a, a flower. We've got cucumbers. We have sages, cosmos, more tomatoes. Uh, Rudbeckia, moving down the line here. We have scabiosas, which newsflash 409 and 10, scabiosas are the most beautiful weed you can ever have. They will reseed, they're so easy. Dahlias, also commonly thought to be very difficult, but they're not, they're very easy. More tomatoes, we've got squash. Keep it moving down the way here. Look at those incredible snapdragons. Very proud of those. We've got Gomprina, which is a really fun globe am amaranth. Does really great in heat. We have zinnias, we have our garlic, we have peppers, we have uh, melon and tomatillos. Whew. Oh, not to mention our educational garden, which has onions, more tomatoes, peppers, uh marigolds we have a lot going on this year on the farm and can you hear the high school <laughs> we're super close to the high school so they're interrupting the the video uh, but we're really proud of the farm this year if you've watched our videos you can see every year it's getting better things are looking nicer we're getting systems under control the soil is getting better we're having an easier time with the weeds it's hard, every year is very hard, but we see a tiny little bit of improvement that keeps us going. And so we can't wait to see what the next year's will be like.